Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of Real Geniuses. We've had another little hiatus, however, we are back again. Uh, I am Diffuser, with me as always is J-Mart. What's up, buddy? Not a whole lot, just chilling. Playing some Una this time for our stream. Uh, I know. It's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I handed you your last win, too. I know. <laughs> No, it uh, should be a good little good little stream of uh, just some chill Uno in the background for those of you who are watching it. If you're on SoundCloud, obviously uh, you won't be able to see it, but check it out on YouTube where we'll be doing all of our videos that go along with the podcast every week. Yes. And uh, let's see here, of course, I have some new stories to talk about. And do you got anything new you want to talk about, Jay Mark? You're getting fit and back to normal health and working out again, yeah? Slowly. Slowly. But yes. <laughs> it's slowly getting there. I still got... Uh, I went to the doctor this week, actually, for my uh, post-op kind of checkup and make sure everything's going swell. And he said, you know, in a few months I'll be back to normal. So, Yeah. Just a few months away. <laughs> exactly. So that's like four episodes for y'all. Yes. <laughs> It'll be a few. But it should be good once I'm there. It's just a slow recovery process for adults. Which is right. less than fun. But oh well. And then your news is a little bit more exciting. <laughs> I know, dude. It's, 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 you know, 2017, man. It's really, really going off. Um, see here. So, on our last episode, we talked about how my neighbor got arrested in my son, correct? Correct. Right. So, to start off with February, I almost got arrested in my backyard. <laughs> and, you know, I think also along in that same story, we talked about the raccoon, yeah? Yes. So yeah, yeah a little bit yeah. kind of the same thing. Cops are involved, the raccoon is involved. You know, uh, my dogs were being attacked by a raccoon again. Of course, I tried to you know go out there. I made a spear that I fashioned. I told you about it last time. That didn't work out so well. My dogs were torn to crap again, and this raccoon was still savage as all get out. So, and I, me and my wife recently purchased a gun. So I told her I was like the most logical thing at this point now is to go get me the gun. She brings me the gun. I discharge a few rounds into this raccoon. I didn't have hollow points, so it just kind of went straight through. Body shots, it was dark, so I couldn't really see to get a headshot on it. I was lucky I hit the darn thing anyway. Anyway, so it's over in the corner dying. I told my wife, I was like, well, I don't want to shoot anymore because this was at 4 in the morning. I heard my dogs yelping at 4 in the morning. And then, um, so as she's making her way up to go get the axe out of my truck, Mind you, she's covered in blood because she's been tending to the dogs. Because, they, like I said, they were torn to crap. And uh, there's a cop up front, a, a female cop, and she startles her. She's like, "Whoa!" She's like, "What's going on? Is everything all right?" And uh, my wife's like, "Yeah." And then the lady officer notices that she has blood all over her hands and arms. And she's like, "What's going on?" And my wife has the most beautiful response you can ever possibly have in a situation like this. She replies to the cop, <laughs> I'm getting the axe for my husband. I can only imagine what's going through this cop's head at this point, because she's like, are you getting an axe to finish your husband off? Or what? I don't know. However, and keep in mind too, we were just re or remodeling our house. So our house is torn to crap, looks like a real crack house. And then, uh... <laughs> so she tells uh, the cop, she's like, oh, my husband's out back and she he was shooting a raccoon. And then the lady officer replies, oh, my guys have already got him. My wife doesn't know that I have just been detained by five other police officers. <laughs> I have guns pointed at my head at this point. And I mean, this is all caught on my surveillance cameras, by the way, so it's good fun. I may figure out how to post them or send them to you, Jim, but, yeah. so you can put them out for everyone to see. And then... Um, so yeah, I get a spotlight on me and everything. Hey, what are you doing? I was like, God, oh, put your hands up. I got my hands up, had the gun in my hand. Put the gun down. Getting all these freaking orders barked at me. And I'm, you know, I'm just shocked because I just got, I'm here in the headlight. It's early in the morning. And then uh, he's like, walk this way. Turn around. Oh, okay, do you want me to walk backwards, sir? I, I mean, I don't know what to do at this point. He's not really feeling it. 
And uh, I mean, then you see him approach on my camera, like I said, gun pointed at my head and everything. Keep in mind, this is the second time in a matter of 30 days I've had <laughs> the police officer's laser sights pointed at me. <laughs> not a good time. It's not, it's not been nice and so he's, lately. Right? <laughs> I mean, and like I said, the night before, there was like six gunshots and they didn't come out. So thank you for protecting and serving when I'm trying to protect my household. Anyway, <laughs> so they tell me, he's like, get on one knee. So I get on one knee, I found awkward. And then he's like yelling at me and stuff. He's like, is there anyone else back here? And you can see on the camera that I signal with my hand. My wife's in, like I move my hand towards my door. It's like, my wife's in the room there. He's like, don't move. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then as they approach me, they tap me on the shoulders. Like, put your hands behind your back. The one cop who cuffed me was actually extremely nice. He was all like, interweave your hands, or, inter or interweave your fingers behind your back. I was like, is it like this? He's like, yes, it's perfect. Thank you. It's like, well, you're welcome. He's like, yeah. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, and they're sitting there talking to me and stuff. They're just saying, you know, hey, do you know it's illegal to discharge your firearm in city limits? I was like, well, I do now. I was like, I figured it was okay after what I heard last night. So, <laughs> but anywho, I digress. So they're sitting there, they're talking to me, and they're asking me what's going on. I was like, well, if you look over in that corner over there, you'll see an animal crawling around. I was like, there's a raccoon that was killing my, uh, my dog, so I shot it. It's like I tried to kill it, you know, or get it away with a stick. It wasn't working, so I figured that was the best bet at this point. And then, uh, so they're like, you should have called animal control. I was like, I'm not trying to be a dick because they don't like it when you do that. And then, uh, I was like, you should call animal control. Animal control is closed at this hour, sir. And I was like, like you should have called. I was like, well, I was like, again, I was like, if you look in the room over there, you'll see my dogs. Because I have two white dogs. And they were covered in blood. Like, they weren't white. They weren't blue. And he's like, oh, okay. And uh, apparently they're supposed to write me a ticket and, you know, possibly take me in. However, he says, I, since I, since I now I know what the situation is, it's like, you know, I'm not going to write you a ticket or nothing, got all my information. So I'm still unclear, like, if this situation happens to me, <laughs> if I can discharge my firearm in a raccoon or not, because he kind of gave me the okay without giving me the okay. Yeah. But yeah, so that's, that's my weekend <laughs> in a nutshell. Craziness. I For shook sure. their hands all but one because the one day just started getting... I need all your information, so I hate to stop me from doing all that. Like I said, you just got to see the video footage of it, and I'll try to get that to you, J-Mart. So. But yeah, dude, what's what's new with you, buddy? Not not that. You know, I'm just, <laughs> just studying for classes and stuff. That's all that's new with me. Oh, uh, come on. Where's the excitement? <laughs> we did, no cops actually. Barely. <laughs> the most exciting thing we've done uh, on my side is setting up a new Twitch channel. Um, my old yeah, one, you know, was jmart underscore 24 ube, which was really confusing to explain whenever all my other channels are the exact same name except for that. Um, so now that's fixed. No longer have to worry about people being confused about it because that was super annoying to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now it's all underneath the same name, jmart underscore 24 rl. Super easy. Same as my Twitch and everything else. And the same as my Twitch. Same as my Twitter and Instagram and everything else. Everything is easier to locate. Exactly. It'll be a little bit of a grind getting, you know, my follows and subs and stuff back, but oh well. You know, it'll just the, be... The loyal people will find it. No, yeah, no, for sure. And the, most of those people are already back, so now it's just a... A matter of building it all to where I want it again and getting it all sorted and you know the super fun stuff that comes with it. I haven't really had a lot of stuff going on outside of that. <laughs> I've just been staying busy with class, which is nice. I guess. Yeah. You know, got midterms coming up already. So close to being done with the school year already. <laughs> I know, dude, this year, this, this whole thing has flown by. For sure. It feels like this for me. Like, I, uh, I'm, I'm happy that it is because I can't be in it where I live at right now. Um, for the people that have watched my streams, they know how much of an issue it is for me right now because I am straight up on Google Net. It is terrible. I wish I was.
wasn't, but there's nothing I can do about it. Um, and I'd, I'd like to move back to where I was, where I had decent internet, and you know, all that. But we'll see. I'm also finding out, though, I might have to move out of state for other reasons. Um, this is, I guess, tell. news. My, you know, my yeah, this is the first you told to, me. I didn't, yeah, even get I didn't even think about this. it. <clears throat> all right, so I, I went to the doctor. They told me, you know, it would be six months before I'm cleared, all this and that. But part of the issue that I had the surgery for is slowly coming back. And uh, they weren't exactly saying why. There's a couple reasons why. One of those might literally be that Arkansas is slowly killing me. <laughs> um, That's no bueno, my friend. Yeah, uh, just the environment right here uh, with how humid it is and a few other things are actually actively like causing me issues. So I found that out and I need to move to a, you know, colder climate and I'll be fine. But yeah, so that was, you know, kind of got to make a decision around May anyways about where I'm moving to, but that's definitely going to influence my decision, I guess, now. <laughs> <laughs> but um I think I think it's just where you are specifically. I don't think it's just our, I think you need to move again closer <laughs> to me and sleep with. So yeah, it'll be a, uh, it'll be different once I figure everything out. But hopefully, once I do make this move, uh, I'll be a little more settled again and get back into everything a little better. But it might have to be to a uh, different climate because it's it's starting to act up again. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Dad face. Yeah. <coughs> I was very disappointed, I mean, one, because it wasn't a cheap surgery, um, the right. bill, and that sucked. Luckily, I'm not paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, uh, my insurance doesn't pay anything until I hit a certain deductible. And this will take up that entire deductible, so. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You know, you gotta aim big with it, man. Literally, it's, uh, I, I have a three grand deductible on insurance, and this was 2600 So. Shoof. And that's after, you know, some <laughs> things were removed and stuff like that that I don't have to pay for. But, yeah, it was pricey. It wasn't fun either. <laughs> I, I would say not but yeah that had I forgotten you know yeah that kind of did have some news <laughs> yeah I know like, you totally blindsided me with that I, I don't know what to do with this <laughs> yeah it's nothing major it's just you know I might be moving major for who I'll be leaving you <laughs> but Really I mean, technically, uh, you're not leaving me because, I mean, we've never actually, you know, been. Yeah, no, we don't same hang out county. in the same. <laughs> I mean, we've been in the same counties. We just didn't know each other at the time. Um, yes. It's different that way, but you know, it, it'll be the it'll be the exact same relationship if I do move somewhere else, essentially. So it's not really it, it even would that be, big of a deal. But it's gonna make our actual <laughs> filming of videos harder, much harder, <laughs> much much harder. Look, man, my parents got a pool. I know you are a pool guy, so <laughs> I am done with that life. I'm out of it. Can't bring me back. Uh -huh, I think it'd be kind of cool to be a pool man. <laughs> You know, I'm done with that life. Which, speaking of that, um, I did have another story. This is uh, kind of funny. I haven't really talked about it much because, one, you know, the surgery, I have never worked. I was put out of work for three months now. So, yeah. as a broke college student that doesn't have that single time to get do and file a book, right? Right. So, I filed. I have not received a penny yet, by the way. Um, they called my old boss 
and said that I claimed medical leave from that company. Never once did I do that, right? Is it your old boss family as well? Um, one of the people I worked with was family. Yeah, the people that okay. I knew really well. And I was just like, are you kidding me? So this is why I'm getting paid? They wrote that down because I said when I left his company, it was because I was having surgery. And that's the reason I wrote down I was leaving. Turns out, you write that down, people think immediately that you're on medical leave. And they try to make the company pay for your unemployment instead of, you know, how it is. And it, the unemployment process is a joke. I have spent hours trying to fill out all the paperwork and make sure everything's right and do this and that and you know just all the stuff for it i've been paying money in my entire life i know how much money's in there they send me a notice that says hey you've got this much money in your unemployment saying yeah you can get this much in benefits which i haven't seen which is tough on an unemployed broke college student (laughs) right (laughs) so hopefully in the next few weeks finally get paid it'll be nice yeah but I'm also at the point you get a little bit extra money especially when you're broke yeah no but the thing is you know also I'll be actually at the point where I can actually work again now so I really the time when I needed unemployment I wasn't able to get it and now that I'm actually healthy enough to go back to work you know I'll finally be able to receive it it's just like it's such a joke like, people, you know, don't want to talk about the unemployment system in America, but our unemployment and healthcare and everything else is a joke. Like, <laughs> people don't realize it, I guess, because, you know, most people don't even think about it until you need it. You know, it's just there. But, yeah, it's been, it's been a fun, a little tiring. I made a lot of angry phone calls. <laughs> I guess I did have news and I just blanked on them. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, I shouldn't have led with the, the arrest story because I mean, I've had a lot of other stuff going on, but it's just not as exciting as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, me and the wife, we're remodeling our house, new floors and stuff, because obviously after the, the January, the first of the year, very first day of the year, you know, my neighbor getting arrested, started remodeling their house, trying to get ready to be sold, all that good stuff. Yeah. So, but yeah, so we've been battling that. Our house has been an absolute cluster. I mean, alienating the kids into one room, tell you what, that's <laughs> three three small children, one room, that's all they're allowed to be in, is a nightmare. Oh, it's horrible, I imagine. Just, oh, God, yes. <laughs> and they are so cooped up, so whenever we leave the house, they're like going nuts. Ah, la, la crazy sounds like a kamikaze bomber so <laughs> yeah no that doesn't sound fun at all you know i know uh, you know i live alone and whenever i you know have no one else here it's not that big of a deal <laughs> but with yeah. a bunch of kids i can't imagine doing any kind of housework <laughs> like oh uh, yeah it's it's awful because <laughs> like I used to I used to be a nanny uh, for my brother at one point in life he's got Annie a J. ton Mart. of kids yeah you know my brother has at the time how many kids did he have at the time because he, he he's a foster parent right he okay. he's adopted four kids now so like I would help out you know after work I'd go help out and do stuff like that because that's a lot of kids to take care of yeah so I mean I've been around helping kids and that's how I know I never want to be a parent. <laughs> I love my nieces oh, it's and nephews happen and all for them you in a that. big way, my man. <laughs> oh, you better believe it won't. That's that's the kiss of death right there when you say that. Believe me. <laughs> I think Uncle Gamer will uh, stay a kidless bachelor for the rest of his life because I like one two things too much, money and time. Yeah, you don't have any of those people <laughs> unless you have like just a downright awesome career that pays you out the wazoo. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working towards that. I don't have that currently. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just, I, I love, like I said, I love my husband. I just do that. I don't want to think, you know, on a confusing note is here that I don't. <laughs> 
love them to death. But they're not the reasons I don't want kids, they're just part of it. I love to you know, be able to take care of them, but also go like, I don't have to take care of them anymore. I can go home. Right, I mean, as an uncle, because I'm an uncle too, but I mean, I'm also a father, so it doesn't matter if I leave my nephews and nieces behind, I still have to deal with my own. Exactly. But if you're an uncle with no kids of your own, you can sit there and play with them, it's and as soon free. as they start getting bad, you can just walk away. <laughs> it's stress-free, and it's gorgeous, and I love it. <laughs> it's just so easy. You go, what? You know, you know what? I'm out. I'm done. Yeah, I only had that luxury for about a year and a half, and then I had mine. Cause my my son is probably the second. He is the second oldest out of all the that brood of next generation. So, well, yeah, it didn't then, last it'd be long. Weird if I did now, because uh, my closest sibling's ten years older than me. My youngest niece and or nephew is a year ish old right now. I think maybe. I, I could be wrong. Between a year and two years old, we'll just put it like that. So if I had a kid, it, it all balances you know, out. They'll all play the with each other. I know, but I'm making more excuses for while I never have kids. But I mean, <laughs> just think about it, right? Like that's just that's a weird age gap between everybody else. My niece and I are the same age gap as my oldest brother and I. Like, uh, she's, you know, the same age I am now. Uh, is how old my brother was whenever she was or whenever I was born you know like it's it's weird it's not, we, we have a weird family our Shh. ages are everywhere your brother is <laughs> the same age you are now when he had her no uh, right no. my brother she's the same age now that my brother might be let me put it this way so there's a 15 year gap between me and my siblings I was okay. 15 when she was born so like it's the same gap between you know the generations of me and my brother and her and me like that kind of gap so even if I had a kid right now <laughs> their oldest cousin would be you know much older <laughs> that's so a free baby sitter right there man which also lives forever away. My family's spread oh, out. Yeah. Yeah. We're spread. We are no, my, my family's all, with the exception of a few, like my dad's side, they're all like Pittsburgh. And then on my mom's side, some of them are in Texas, like just one. Yeah. Or no, two of them are in Texas. And everybody else is all just compiled right here in Central Arkansas. <laughs> Well, that's like, you know, I, so, I, mean, I obviously live here uh, in Arkansas. My brother also lives here. But my sister lives on the far side of Texas from us. And my brother is actually about to move to Georgia. Uh, and, you know, like, I lived seven hours from everybody else for a while. Until I came back for the surgery. So, I mean, it's just, uh, we've always been spread. Me and my, you know, actual close siblings, so... <laughs> It's it's been fun, yeah. But nonetheless, I think you know distance makes the heart grow fonder. I'm super close with my siblings, but I don't know how it would be to see them every day. <laughs> but anywho, I think we kind of like recast well enough for our break. <laughs> we rambled. A yeah, lot. I think we hit it. Fast and efficiently, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I left a few little tidbits out of my arresting story, but I mean, how much time do we have left, bud? Uh, we're actually about to be at the limit. <laughs> okay. Well, it's a quick little share, so I'll go ahead and throw it in. When they were detaining me, they had me down, dropped to one knee. Yeah. Which then they quickly told me to drop to the other knee, like I was stupid for not doing that, but they said take one knee. But anyway. Once they got me back up, they're searching me. Now, when they search you, dude, they really look like you jumped up and everything. I mean, they got a hand up and under. I, I felt the palm of my crap lift up to feel under if I had something stashed. I was like, oh my god. It was it was quite exhilarating. <laughs> I know I got jealous of that large man. Dude, you're shooting your life, huh? Oh yeah, he's like, do you have any other weapons on you? I was like, yeah, I got a pocket knife. Like, 
aggressively jerks it out of my pocket. I was like, I can't even get it in another truck. But, <coughs> oh yeah, that was it. <laughs> Oh. 2017 off the main, huh? I know, dude. They have positive you're, 17. You're having a lot of, <laughs> a lot of fun with it. You know, I believe in in one of our other podcasts we said it can't go anywhere but up from here. And you know what? I'll be danged if I have not gone further down. And that's the same thing. With, you know, like I've had you know the unemployment issues. Like every week, whenever I get that, whenever I try and deal with it, I'm just like, we were so positive about this year being great, and it feels like we are just getting pushed so hard against. Like, <laughs> no, it's it's a test to us. It's how hard are we really going to push is. back? Like, <laughs> like I, you know, I started off this year. I was like, I want to be so sturdy. I want to be strong. You know, I want to be really positive. And every morning when I wake up, I'm like, this is gonna be so much tougher because I feel like the world has, uh, heard what we said and was just like, no. Like, oh yeah, no. you'll be positive. <laughs> oh, yeah, here you go. Try this on for size. How does cuffs fit? <laughs> oh God, no. Uh, yeah, it'll be fun. So I guess we'll have to see uh, what the next week holds, right? <laughs> I know. Like my all my wife's friends at work are like, "Oh man, I wonder what March is going to have in store for you." Neighbor got arrested in January. I almost got arrested in February. What does March hold in store for me? I, I think don't you, know. Think I'm very curious to, to find out. Yeah, that's that's that should be next in line. Gosh dang it, I've been involved with too much of this already. <laughs> we'll see. We will see. She's going to get brought up with some drug <laughs> charges. I don't even do drugs. Huh. But, well, I guess until next time, uh, it's been real, you know. We didn't really talk about anything, I guess, movie or anything gaming related this time. It's kind of just been like a catch-up and ramble session, but <laughs> I feel like... It really has been. I mean, dude, with all the random crap that keeps so much stuff <laughs> happening, though, I mean... There's a lot of stuff that we don't probably talk about because one, we don't want to address some of our more personal issues in the podcast. But, you know, it's just, 2017's been fun already. We haven't really had time yeah, to I'm take a breather. I'm gonna go ahead. I threw out some pretty personal stuff. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. No, it's. Uh, I share because I care. We, 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 we leave our, our stuff out, you know, we, we air the skeletons out of the closet, but there's still a few bugs that I feel like I'm probably going to leave back for a little while, you know, until we run out we'll of stuff to talk for about. We'll save those for But, until then, I'm J-Mart, sitting here with my buddy Josh. We're, uh, we're a couple of not-so-real geniuses, obviously, and we will see you guys next time. Peace. Bye.